Okay, so in the last video we actually worked through this problem and we saw that because we had two radicals um, and they were, you know, two out of three terms, so we, we couldn't just get rid of the radicals all in one step uh, like we could if it had been something more like that. Then we could just get rid of it in one time. Um, but when we see the, this type of situation, we know we're going to have to square twice before we're done. Well, here again we have the same sort of situation. We have this radical equal to 2 plus this radical. So at least we have our square root or radical by itself on the left hand side, or one of them anyway. So we could go ahead and get rid of this one by squaring both sides. So now when we do that, the square undoes the square root. So we have 3y minus 2 equals now this is a binomial, so in order to truly square it, we probably should write it out twice and multi uh, go ahead and multiply and distribute. So I'm going to do this as combining as I go. 2 times 2 would be 4, and then my outer terms would be a 2 square roots of y. The inner terms would be a 2 square roots of y. So altogether that would be 4 square roots of y. And then the last terms, square root of y times the square root of y, would just be y. Now let's combine like terms. If I move my plain y over to the left, that would be 3y minus y is 2y. And if I were to move this 4 over to the left, by subtracting 4, minus 2, minus 4 would be minus 6 equals 4 square roots of y. Now in the last video we also got rid of this number in front of the radical. We divided both sides, but if we do that here we can't divide um, 2 by 4 very easily or 6 by 4. It becomes a fraction. So I'm not going to do that this time. I, I want to show it to you sort of both ways so you can see what happens. But at this point we can get rid of the square root if we square both sides. Now again, over here on the left, if we're squaring both sides, that literally means we have to write it out twice and multiply it to itself. So this would be 4y squared, and then we would have minus 12y, minus 12y would be minus 24y, and then negative 6 times negative 6 would be plus 36 equals now here, this is a product raised to a power, so we have to square both of them. 4 squared would be 16, and the square root squared would be just the y. Now again, we have, this is squared, so that's quadratic. We should be thinking factoring. So let's move our 16 over to this side. So we have 4y squared, um, and this would be minus 40y plus 36 equals 0. And now do you notice that they all have a 4 in common? We could divide that out. So that would be y squared minus 10y plus 9 equals 0. Now that will factor. It will factor into y minus 9 and y minus 1. So our answers then, either y minus 9 is 0 or y minus 1 is 0. So y equals 9 or y equals 1. Now we have to check them. If we check the 9 first, that says the square root of 3 times 9 would be 27 minus 2, that's a 7 there, sorry guys, should equal 2 plus the square root of 9. So 27 minus 2 would be the square root of 25 equals 2 plus the square root of 9 would be 3. So does 5 equal 2 plus 3? Yes, it does. We also have to check the other one. If we check the 1, then that would say the square root of 3 times 1, which would be 3, minus 2, equals 2 plus the square root of 1. 3 minus 2 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Equals 2 plus the square root of 1 is 1. That says 1 equals 3, and that is not true. So that tells us that this 1 is an extraneous solution, but the 9 did work.